there seemed no order in the land's volcanic birth. There seemed no order in the seas that later washed across the land to still its violence. Then the land rose up and threw the sea from its bed and clothed itself in jungles. There seemed no order there either. There seemed no order to the savage glaciers which slowly ground their way across the land and then meekly melted away as if the move had been a mistake. However, there was a pattern in this apparent disorder. Nature spent millions and millions of years laying down a precise and perfect plan for the future. The land had prepared itself for the management of men. It was a seismic job back uh, sometime in 65, uh, southeast of the Saskatoon near the Quill Lakes. We weren't probing more than 5,000 feet there, but the uh, from various uh, deep horizons indicated a probable reefal trap. The seas that washed over Saskatchewan many millions of years ago left rich rewards in their beds. The life that swam in those oceans slowly decomposed into combinations of hydrogen and carbon to form pockets of oil and natural gas. Today, drills are sent down as far as 11,000 feet and strike oil and gas at various depths. Field after field has been discovered and millions of dollars for land and search permits paid to the provincial treasury. Deep drilling exploration is encouraged by incentive programs. More than 6,000 oil and gas wells have been successfully brought into production since the first discovery was made in 1934 near Lloyd Minster. Six refineries are already purifying crude oil for market purposes and more are planned. The province accounts for roughly one quarter of Canada's total petroleum output. A wide variety of chemical plants extract the valuable sidelines that are so essential in the manufacture of hundreds of different products, ranging from sulfuric acid to lipstick. Much of the petroleum finds its way to markets thousands of miles away through an expanding network of pipelines. But petroleum is not the only bequest the ancient oceans left behind. Nope, sap potash mining's not such bad job. <laughs> I had worse. You get used to spending shift about 3,200 feet pizamu, uh, underground. Sap continues border digs, mm, almost five tons ore a minute. Only thing is the saltiness of the dust. Several hundred million years ago, this red, glass-like rock was the saltiness in an ocean. When it dried up, the salt was precipitated, forming vast beds of potash. With the world population rapidly increasing, the soil has to produce more food 
and potash is the chemical that makes poor land productive. Without potash, no form of plant or animal life could exist. A large proportion of the world's recoverable reserves of potash, enough to meet present world demands for 800 years, lies beneath Saskatchewan. If predicted demands are to be met, one new plant should open every year until 1980, and the potash industry should become second only to agriculture in terms of the number of people employed. While Saskatchewan's potash will help satisfy tomorrow's needs, agriculture has a major part to play in the meantime. Oh, we should get mm, 20 to 25 bushels to the acre, which isn't bad. Uh, knocking off expenses, capital cost, should be profitable, uh, providing the export price holds up, mind you. Today, a different sea flows across the land, an horizon-wide sea of prairie gold. Some 20 million acres are harvested every year. Over 500 million bushels, more than half of Canada's total wheat production. The grain is rich, reputed to have the finest milling quality of any in the world. The use of proper fertilizers and herbicides steadily improves both quality and quantity. Even the threat of a disastrous drought year is being minimized by technology and diversification. The South Saskatchewan Dam took nearly 10 years to complete. A $112 million investment in the future Designed to deliver 400,000 horsepower in hydroelectric energy, this massive project will benefit both the people of the province and, in turn, the whole of Canada. Our people, welcome the Prime Minister to our midst. Because... he will officially open the most important economic project in Saskatchewan's history. Now, I'm not going to take time this afternoon to enumerate the many benefits which will accrue to our province economically from the dam. They are all well known. Suffice it to say that this dam and this lake will help our agriculture... The earth-filled dam measures more than 16,000 feet, over three miles from end to end. The resulting lake will have nearly 500 miles of shoreline with much of it set aside for park and recreational facilities. However, the greatest benefit will be the abundance of water in areas where water was once short. From the project, specialized ditching equipment adapted for the terrain and soil conditions spread a network of canals across the land. Once completed, the system of canals, holding reservoirs, and distribution pipelines will bring much needed water to communities and industries in many parts of the province. The most dramatic changes will be seen in the drylands. Over 200,000 acres will be irrigated when the conservation project is fully developed. Thank you. 
rich crops of hay, feed grains, cereals, and special crops will be harvested in areas where only buffalo grass and stunted brush grew before. In addition, quick freeze and canning plants, even sugar refineries, will be established. A livestock industry will develop to further diversify agriculture, and farmers will be more immune to the danger of depending on wheat alone. As part of the program, new community pastures are added each year, and financial assistance has encouraged the building of modern hog production facilities. Several hundred miles to the northeast, where the Saskatchewan and Carrot Rivers create a delta, the dam will help to solve another problem, not one of irrigation, but that of flood control. Seven hundred thousand fertile acres of the region will be drained. Forage crops, feed grains, and rapeseed will flourish in what was once a swampy wilderness. Saskatchewans seem to have the knack of being able to tame the wilderness, especially in the north. <laughs> you could not call my job uh, tame in the wilderness exactly. There's about oh, 33 tons of copper concentrate in the rigs. I jockey it over to the railhead uh, every couple of days. The road from copper mine to railhead is typical of the resource roads that are helping to develop the province's northern wealth. prehistoric volcanic action that fashioned the land left rich deposits of minerals near the surface. Copper, zinc, nickel, uranium, molybdenum, these and more have been discovered. Ore bearing rock is fed into crushers, chemical processes extract and concentrate the minerals. One after another, new mines come into production. Summer and winter, once dried, the concentrate is ready for the journey to market. But new mines not only develop resources, they open up the land as well. In order to operate, Many new roads must be constructed through previously impenetrable and largely unpopulated regions. With the remote resources more accessible, men are able to move in to develop them. Well, before, we didn't have very much work to do, uh, mostly only some trapping and fishing. Now we can learn to cut down and to haul trees for the pulpwood and can earn pretty good pay. Métis and Indians, many of whom had little or no income, are being trained to fell and trim trees in the forests north of Prince Albert, the location of Saskatchewan's first pulp mill. Construction began in 1966 and continued winter and summer. Once complete, the complex will represent a total value of $80 million. 350 people will be employed in the mill, with 650 more in the forests. The plant will consume 1,500 cords of wood daily to produce high-quality bleached craft pulp at a rate of 650 tons a day, one of the world's largest single pulp mills. The total annual output of 250,000 short tons of pulp selling in world markets is just one dividend on industrial investments that are developing Saskatchewan's vast resources, resources that can never be exhausted. 
for every tree cut, a new, healthier one is planted, and with it grows the economy. The Saskatchewan of today is a new Saskatchewan. Industry is establishing here and developing our resources at an unprecedented rate. But this progress is important only if it provides greater benefits for our people. It must mean additional employment, a greater variety of jobs, higher incomes, more attractive communities, and generally wider opportunities for all our people. Especially, it must mean that the very large proportion of our population who are young and energetic must have an opportunity to remain in Saskatchewan. Industrial development has many other advantages to offer our province. It means we can build new roads in our province, widen existing ones to make them safer. It means that we can turn our TB hospital in the Coppell Valley, which we no longer need, into a school of fine arts. means that many schools can get a special grant to help cover the cost of band instruments. And it means more and more new schools to apply for the grant. It means larger and better equipped facilities to train the young men and women who will build a new Saskatchewan. we can afford to update our hospitals, build new ones where necessary. It means that our old folk, the pioneers who first broke ground in Saskatchewan, can relax in comfort, knowing that we are grateful. These are just some of the benefits that come with industrial development. But perhaps the most important benefits for all is the opportunity to work. History proves us willing workers. Give us a job and we do it well. Our children have the chance to maintain that tradition. We live in a new emerging Saskatchewan. We have built it together and we can feel proud our land is prepared for progress.